Hello and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I'm a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. When I think of God's presence in the world, I am grateful. Grateful for the presence of hope. Grateful for the gift of life. When I think of God's presence in my life, I am humbled. Humbled by the gift of grace. Humbled by the invitation to begin again. When I think of God's presence in this community, I am glad. Glad to be surrounded by people worshiping our God. God is faithful. God is love. Our opening prayer. How very good and pleasant it is, Lord God, to be drawn together by you as people in Christ. Pour your empowering spirit upon us that the message we hear proclaimed may become more than words upon a page. Help us this hour to listen for and lean toward your voice, which speaks beyond the words we utter. Move us past our doubts, that we might step forward with a faith that does not end. Nudge us to touch areas of our lives that need to be touched, so that we might then recognize that no door is so heavy that it can lock you out. This we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior. Amen. Hear the words of Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 tells us, now faith Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So, faith is the substance or assurance of things we hope for, but have not yet received. Faith, confidence, belief, trust, is also our evidence of that which is not seen, the invisible spiritual things. Faith comes before prayer is answered. Increase our faith, they said. And Jesus replied to the disciples, indicates that even a very small amount of faith, if it is genuine trust in God, can lead to remarkable results. The issue is not the size of faith, but its presence. This verse must be understood in connection with other passages that talk about prayer and the nature of genuine faith. For example, James chapter 1, verse 6. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Does any of the following sound familiar? If I just had more faith, I wouldn't have so many questions or doubts. If I just had more faith, God would answer my prayers. If I just had more faith, she wouldn't have died. If I just had more faith, I would be a better person, a better parent, a better spouse. If I just had more faith, I would know what to do. I would handle things better. If I just had more faith, life would be different. It is an approach to faith at least as old as the Apostles' own faith. It is the approach that they have taken in, the gospel, in today's Gospel. Increase our faith, they asked Jesus. What prompted the apostles to say, increase our faith? Jesus had just given them a warning. Jesus said to his disciples, occasions for sin are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to sin. Be on your guard. If a brother or sister sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. That's difficult. It is a challenge to live that way. Increase our faith is their response. It seems like a reasonable request. If a little is good, a lot must be better. The request to increase our faith and the belief that if I had more faith, 
things would be better, reveals a misunderstanding of faith itself. Jesus is very clear that faithfulness is not about size or quantity. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, he says, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. I don't think that faith is measured out according to how difficult the task or work before us is. Faith is not a thing we have or get. Faith is a relationship of trust and love. It means opening ourselves to receive another's life and giving our life to another. That other one is Jesus, our Savior. That one faith relationship is determinative of who we are and how we live. Faith is not about giving intellectual agreement to a particular doctrine or idea. Faith is not about how much or how strongly we believe Jesus' words or actions. As an example, when we speak about a married couple's faithfulness, we do not mean they believe or agree with each other's ideas or even a particular understanding of marriage. They are faithful because they have committed themselves to each other in love and trust. They are faithful because they continually give their life to the other and receive the other's life as their own. They are faithful because they carry with them that one relationship wherever they go, in all that they are and all that they do. And so it is with our faith relationship with Jesus. Faith will not, however, change the circumstances of our lives. Instead, it changes us. Living in faith does not shield us from the pain and difficulties of life. It does not undo the past, and it will not guarantee a particular future. Rather, faith is the means by which we face and deal with the circumstances of life, the difficulties and losses, the joys and successes, the opportunities and possibilities. Faith does not get us a pat on the back, a reward, or a promotion in God's eyes. It is simply the way in which we live and move and have our being, so that at the end of the day, the faithful ones can say without pride or shame, we have done only what we ought to have done, nothing more and nothing less. We have lived in openness to, trust in, and love for Christ. We have allowed him to guide our decisions, our words, and our actions. We have been sustained by him in both life and death. Faith, however, is not lived out in the abstract. It is practiced day after day in the ordinary, everyday circumstances of life. Some days, when the pain and heaviness of life seem more than we can carry, it is by faith, relationship with Jesus, that we get up each morning and face the reality of life. Other days present other circumstances. When we feel the pain of the world and respond with compassion by feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, speaking for justice, when we experience the brokenness of a relationship and offer forgiveness and mercy, when we see the downtrodden and offer our presence and prayers, in all those we have lived, seen, and acted by faith. Then there are days when we feel powerless, lost and do not know the way forward. By faith we sit in silence and wait. Faith is how we live, the lens through which we see ourselves, others, and the world, the criterion by which we act and speak. Faithfulness means that no matter where we go, no matter what circumstances we face, we do so in relationship with the one who created, loves, sustains, and redeems us, the one who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Increase our faith. It's not necessary. We live by faith, not because we have enough faith, but because we have faith, any faith, even mustard side, seed-sized faith. That's all we need. Jesus believes that, so should we. The question is not how much faith we have, rather. How are we living the faith we do have? How is our faith, our relationship with Jesus, changing our lives, our relationships, the lives of others. If it is not, more of the same will surely make no difference. 
Faith comes by drawing closer to God through prayer and the study of his word, the Bible. Paul told the Philippians to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The members of the Church of God in Philippi believed God's word and they obeyed his commandments as they listened and followed Paul's instruction on giving their cares to God in believing prayer, their faith was planted. The Bible is God's inspired word to mankind. When we read the Bible, we learn that faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working, even though we cannot see it. Faith knows that no matter what the situation in our lives or someone else's, that the Lord is working in it. Faith gives us the confidence and assurance in God and Jesus Christ to answer our prayers and bring us through impossible situations. Johnny V. Chandler wrote, Even when you can't see your way, stand in faith. Even when you feel like you can't face another day, stand in faith. Even when the tears want to flow from your eyes, stand in faith. Knowing that our God will always provide, even when you feel that all hope is gone, stand in faith. Knowing that he is always there for you to lean on, stand in faith. Even when you feel like giving up, stand in faith. Because he is there saying, just look up. Even in those times you feel so all alone, stand in faith. Hold on and be strong, for he is still on the throne. Even when it's hard to believe, stand in faith. Knowing that he can change your situation suddenly, stand in faith. Even in those times you feel it's hard to pray, stand in faith. And believe that he has already made the way. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So stand in faith because you already have the victory. What is faith? Faith is trust, assurance, and confidence in God and Jesus Christ. Living faith is not just believing that God exists. It is demonstrated by one's service and obedience to God. The mustard seed of faith is already planted within us. It is Christ himself. He has withheld nothing from us. And now let us, God, let us God's people, pray. Jesus, our Lord and our God, through the apostles' witness, grant us the courage to live our faith sincerely, persevering and affirming your message of peace, repentance, and reconciliation. Holy and risen Christ, strengthen our faith against tests and trials. Jesus, our Lord and our God, empower us to reject the rumor and gossip of political sound bites, to stand firm in the truth of your gospel before all who hold governing or frightening power in this world, near and far. Holy and risen Christ, strengthen our faith against tests and trials. Jesus, our Lord and our God, comfort and be heal all who are afflicted with pain and suffering and fill those who give them support with fresh and sustaining vitality. Jesus, our Lord and our God, surround the mournful with the glorious light of your resurrection that destroyed death for all time. Let us now rejoice for all the faithful who now live again eternally with you. Holy and risen Christ, strengthen our faith against tests and trials. Lord God in Christ, erase our doubts and fear, free our souls to seek our sustenance in you, our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end. We ask through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and the unwavering love of our Almighty Creator, who together with you reign as one God in glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.